One time for the homie T.I. Yeah. 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 Man, welcome back, brother. What's going down, homie? Uh, it's like, where do we start? You got a lot going on. Hey, man, let's stop, baby. We better start at the top. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> let's talk about Ant-Man and the Wasp, which okay. is dropping July 6th. That's right. The second installment of the Ant-Man franchise. Yeah. And we're glad to see you back. Man, hey, glad to be seen back. Man, and I know, like, a lot of times, like, well, at least with the first movie, uh-huh. it was, you know, you felt that they didn't use a lot of the stuff that you shot <laughs> the first time. It was like, oh, man, maybe Tip won't be back for the next one. But I guess they came, they came correct this time. I mean, well, to be honest with you, I still feel they didn't use enough of the stuff that I shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nah, man, I'm just joking, man. It's a phenomenal. I mean, to be honest with you, I'm a member of a team. It's an ensemble piece. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just wanted to come in and contribute. Uh, I'm I'm extremely happy with the, the finished product. Uh, I think that Marvel does a fantastic job. I think Peyton Reed, as a director, did a phenomenal job. As he all as he did the first time, and with a sequel, everybody who is on the cast, their definite sole intention is to make the second one better than the first one, you know, or to answer questions in the second one that arose in the first one. And I think that this does that. This sequel does that perfectly. And it's not a slack in the bunch. I mean, Paul Rudd, Michael Douglas, Michael Pena, Jeez. Lawrence Fishburne. Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. Michelle, Evangeline Lilly. Michelle Pfeiffer. Oh, oh Pfeiffer's in this one? Too? Oh, did I say that? Oh. Ah. No, but the cast is Liddy. Yeah. Hey, the word lit just died. Oh, when? it died? It died. This is my catch on fire I never or used what? it. Huh? This is my catch on fire or what? Nah, the word lit just died, man. It just, uh, I think Donald Trump Jr. just said lit in a tweet, and they we keep, we just we buried the Damn word. Damn it, man. It is no longer among the repertoire of the black delegation. Oh, so good. So it's, it's now in the rafters it's, with yes. like the, the old Jordan With-like jersey. Crunk. So now they should use flank. And turnt. Turnt. You know uh, on saying? fleek. Yeah, all that. Damn, it's all the way up there with all that, all that stuff. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta switch off. We need something else. Flame, I think flame is flame. No, you are flame. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. Man, nah. so like, I mean, looking over your career, Ti. Like, I mean, everybody knew you from the music. Mm-hmm. Everybody watched, you know, Ti and Tiny Family Hustle. Mm-hmm. But this Marvel stuff mm-hmm. puts you on such a stage to where, like, I mean, did you see new people running up on you that didn't typically no. run up on you in the past? No, you know, man. Nothing for me. changed. Nah, man, for me, man, this is this is my life, you know, and I live my life one day at a time, regardless of what's going on, I'm going to maintain the same personality. <sighs> well, not saying that it would change you, but the people that, like, know who you are, like, no Japanese kids, like, oh, couldn't you see like, Japanese, I mean, none of that. Japanese kids knew me anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know, T.I., you, know. you know, every time I see you, I tell you this, and it just never ceases to amaze me how you coming from <laughs> rapper to now with all these big movies, the Marvel movies and well, all the stuff you. you do, and then you're just speaking out on everything and you're still working. I got to. Well, how can I not? I got seven children. Well, yeah, but you know, usually when a black man of your caliber speak out, they blackball you. Well, see, they blackballed me before I started speaking that. So, you know, it was like, you know, this that was serendipitous in a way. Mm, all right, bitch, for serendipitous. Yeah, new words. You got you going to send a whole bunch of people out to Google that. What, serendipitous? <laughs> serendipitous. We knew what it was. But. You know what it means? Yeah. Okay, cool. But, uh, I mean, but the, the raptivism mm-hmm. that you're doing, I don't want to call it activism because, like, it's not just limited you, you to should, what you do in the streets. You should call it accidentism. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't really, like, intend to take for, you know what I'm saying? I just, it really just came out of a real sincere, a passionate need to do something. You know what I'm saying? I just feel, me as a person of some, some, I guess, some form of power, so, you know what I mean? I just felt helpless. Yeah, you know I mean that's the worst thing for a, a, a man who's put himself in a position to kind of call his own shots and have his way. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, ran myself up the ranks and earned the right, you know, to be a a king, a boss, or whatever you call a person of of some significant power. But to see all these things happening and to feel like I ain't got there's nothing I can do. 
that made me feel like all of the things that I've worked for was just like really fake because you ain't really got no power. You don't really have no say so. You can't do anything. But I think this 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 gave me a sense of yes, there is there are things that that can be done, and you do have power. So Ti, so tell me this: Are you channeling Martin Luther King and Malcolm X? Because <laughs> the reason why I ask you, because you know you are being like I said, you're being such an activist, but you don't I don't ever see you around with no big old crowd making all this noise with that need a crowd. Every time I see you, you're by yourself. Yeah, I mean, well, you don't crowd need a crowd. that one time. You, 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 was, lead, you yeah. was leading the pack that day. Yeah. Yeah, but usually when you hear these people that spill these activists, they always got to have a crowd, a bunch of doggone Negroes around them and stuff. You know, I don't see you in there. When you when I see you speaking, I'm seeing you by yourself. I mean, that's that's that I, I, I can that that's the circle of people I can trust. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, it's small, so I don't. Want, I'm not really. I don't have any kind of fear of what the enemy will do to me. You know what I'm saying? I know what to expect from the enemy. You know, I have more of a concern of what the people who I think are on my side are able to do because they're a lot closer. You know what I'm saying? So that's why that's why I keep my circle small. Yeah. Gotcha. So when you make these type of waves, right? You know, you start these different What kind moves. of waves? Well, you know, you know, when you, you, you the, the call of action for people to boycott a place like Houston's. Uh it seemed like things improved a little bit, then there was another incident. Yeah. And, you know, when do we feel like the job is done? Like are, are we not finished until when do we all feel? like you know, are we not hey, done until all Houston's nah. closed down and they Listen, replaced all man. the management or what? First of all, it's as simple as this. Um, as black people, our consumer base is the largest, okay, in the world. Mm -hmm. Black people, the consumer base, the black dollar is the largest consumer base in the world. We spend $1.2 trillion annually. Going to be 1.5 by 2020, all right? Now, if... We spend the most money, and we have the least. You see what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, but we spend the most money, but get the the we had we had the least amount of money to be able to afford to spend, and we also have the least amount of consideration for the values of our lives, our liberties, and our justices. We have the least amount of ownership. We have the least amount of of, of participation in high level uh, uh, in high level executive positions. Why would we continue to spend our money with corporations that don't value our lives? It's as simple as that. So how long would it take? How long does it take for them to, to value our lives? I think that's the answer to the question. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it, and, and every corporation is set up. You have a CEO, COO, CFO, so on and so forth. And all of these initials, you know, in these corporations, these people, they depend on their quarterly bonuses. Mm -hmm. These quarterly bonuses are dictated by whether or not they reach certain uh, profit margins and projections and what the, how good their numbers do. So if they see a downward departure from their residuals and they say well wait a minute i was expecting by october to be here and for some reason i'm here okay well that mean i don't get my quarterly bonus that mean i can't i can't take my wife on vacation that mean i don't get no peace in my house she walk around with an attitude now i'm leaving my house i need to go to the office my priority is getting my numbers back up so i can get my quarterly bonus and get my house back in order only way you can do that is to value our lives and liberties. That's the only way we're going to get some consideration. Oh, yeah, the dollar moves everything. That's it. Mm -hmm. So it ain't really about just me wanting to boycott stuff. It ain't really about me not liking Houston's or me not liking, you know, the NFL. It ain't about that. Simple as this, man. Look, I don't care how you feel about me. I don't care what your opinion is of me. I don't care if you... You know, invite me in your house and let me sit at your table. It makes no difference to me. However, what you will do is you will value and consider that I or we as a people spend trillions of dollars annually and you count on our money for your quarterly bonuses. Therefore, 
you will handle us accordingly or else, period. And I really dug the fact that you brought up in, um, you know, it was an interview you did recently where you was talking about how, like, the NFL, they're paid to have the national anthem sure. done at these different really? games. A lot yeah. of people didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 uh, the United States military, they pay them. They pay sure. the NFL every game. I Google it and find out how much. But they pay them every game to do the national anthem. It's paid patriotism. And then they get so upset with people saying that kneeling is such a disrespect to the flag. Okay. I seen I seen I seen I seen like a, a white girl with, with with the flag as a bikini. Like, you know what I'm saying? Not like a bikini that would manufacture into like a bikini with the flag print on it. Right. No. It's like she ripped up a flag and made a bikini top out of it. So how did that not do respect? Right. I mean, and people, I think, will pick and choose the fights that they want to make. I mean, because if people look at the origin of taking a knee, it really was to, like, honor soldiers who had, you know, who had fallen. It is to honor fallen soldiers. And we have so many fallen soldiers out there that die at the hands of policemen. When an innocent black man dies, if that does not upset you, but a black man taking a knee does. You're a hypocrite. Yeah, I, mean, I think the narrative got kind of lost as to what the purpose it was doing for. It's not the they're thing. not doing it to be unpatriotic. They're doing it to Man. bring awareness to the fact that we're getting gunned down out here. But look though, what if it was gays and lesbians that were being shot down in the streets? Would Glad go for that? Not at all. Oh no. Oh okay. So if gays and lesbians were being shot down in the streets, and then the players took a knee for uh. For 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 glad, would, do you think the NFL would take that position? Not at all. Oh, okay. What if Jewish people were being shot down in the street every day, and the players took a knee to honor the Jew, the Jewish brothers and sisters that were that were lost out uh, uh, at the hands of police? Do you think the NFL would take that position? Nope. Okay. So how in the hell, if the Constitution says all men are, are created and treated equal, then how is it that when we do it, you, it's punishable. When we do it for us, it's punishable. You see, that's why I can't support the NFL. And the same and, thing about it is most of the NFL here um, is made up of black men, but they ain't for the mess up their check. But see, this is the thing, right? Um, it, 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 when I say I'm not supporting the NFL, like I want to put that in perspective. This ain't about me not wanting to watch no games. This is about me wanting to affect the finances of the NFL. So I'm finding out all the ways that they get their statistics. So, okay, so they get Nielsen ratings when I cut my TV off. So I'm going to cut my TV off. Cut my TV off. And if I do watch the game, I'm going to go somewhere where it's already playing. Buffalo <laughs> Wild Wings. <laughs> so there's ways to cheat the system and make yeah, it work. Yeah, I ain't going to buy no tickets. I ain't going to buy no tickets. And if I get some free... Maybe. It is what it but is. But I doubt it. I ain't gonna buy none though. No. And yeah. I ain't finna I ain't finna buy no I ain't finna buy no jerseys. I ain't gonna buy no football product. Now if I a bootleg jersey at the flea market, maybe. You know what I'm saying? I'm not I'm just I'm going I'm trying to affect the finances. I want to affect the actual residuals, the numbers, the statistics. It ain't about me not seeing no games. That's not the point. Now, you know with what? the with the Super Bowl conveniently being in Atlanta this uh, this upcoming season, is there any amount of money they could throw at you to have you be one of the performers in the Super Bowl halftime show? Um, at this point, no. I mean, but no, nah, I take that back. Yes, there is an amount. <laughs> Oh, is yes. it a number you'd be willing to disclose, or you just kind of keep that under wraps? I mean, it ain't really. I'm saying, like, this is what I'm saying. If it's something undeniable that I know I can put back into the movement and I can do more better for our brothers and sisters and, you know what I'm saying, you know, create some some, some, some programs and opportunities for the underserved areas of the community, you know what I mean? If, if it's that significant, I, I, I mean, it would be consider. it would be very, very difficult for me not to. However, I would also let them know it wouldn't cost you that much if you just came to the table and came up with a compromise 
and something that we both could live with where you, you are not violating the civil rights of the players who choose to protest this injustice is being done in the communities. Why would you pay so much instead of just doing the right thing? That makes sense. Now, it says here, um, the Department of Defense paid NFL teams more than $5 million over four years to buy moments that honored the truth. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, and then they said the Department of Defense and the Jersey Guard paid the Jets a total of $377,000 from 2011 to 2014 for the salutes and other advertising according to federal contracts. So, yeah, they do get paid. Yeah. Gary Pedia in the house. You see what I'm saying?